Want to transform your videos into a winter wonderland? Hello everybody, this is Parrish here and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a simple snow particle effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 20. In just a few minutes I will show you how to create a stunning snow particle effect. So let's jump right in and see how this is done. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to either go in and create yourself a new fusion composition. But in this case we will not do that. We will just move our image to the timeline because we're going to work with our snow particles on top of our image. From there we're going to go into the fusion page and once in there you will see that we just have our medium in and media out since we're going to be working with a particle system we're going to need to bring down a p emitter and a p render node and connect those two please understand that when you have a p emitter and p render they have to be together you cannot use one without the other so if you were to look at your p emitter in your left hand viewer you will see that it comes up and pops up as the right on the p render so if you click on the p render you're able to zoom in by control and center wheel or you can take the center wheel and move around if you hit alt in the center wheel it will skew it and you can rotate it so in this case you don't see any particles except just a few but if you were to take and move the timeline you can see the particles are being generated so with the P emitter selected and highlighted, you will see that in here you have the number of particles being formed for every frame. The number variance is it will vary the number that you write in here. So if there is three in here, your number of very number of particles being generated would be 7 to 13 every frame so it alternates back and forth so it doesn't repeat all the time the lifespan is the length of your video in this case our video is about 120 frames long so we're going to actually put this to 150 so that way the lifespan of the particles are going to last 150 frames before they disappear the same with the variance the variance on the lifespan is they will disappear given the number that you put in here and it's going to be if you put in 10 so it will be they will disappear between 140 and 160 here the random seed is the number of particles that will be generated at the very beginning we're going to make ours 1000 because we have a large frame to fill and our number of particles that we're going to create per frame we're going to make it five and our variance we're going to make it 10 so that way it will create 5 and it will create either 0 to 15 every frame our lifespan variance we're going to leave that at 0 because we're not going to have a lifespan on the number being generated the color the user style we are not going to use the region but we will use style Color, and we'll get into that in a moment. Position variance, we're going to make this at point one and a randomly distributed. So that means that it's just going to be randomly distributed amongst the starting point where the particle will be generated. With this, there is a velocity section, and in that velocity section, that will determine how fast your particles will be moving on the screen. So if you were to take and change this to say 10 and then you were to play it you will see that the particles are moving very quickly on the screen so we're going to be very slow since snowflakes are kind of slow we're going to be 0 0.021 for our speed our variance will also be 0 0.021 if the variance is higher then the velocity the particles will actually start to move in reverse so that if you go higher than the velocity you will see that the particles 
actually go in the opposite direction as well as the direction that you want. So what we're going to always have is we always want the particles to be falling. So we're going to actually make this a connection. So we're going to type in equal enter and we're going to take and click on the plus and connect it to the velocity. So our velocity and our velocity variance will always be the same. So we click this up, you will see that they both will change together. In our velocity, we have inherent. Inherent is where the particles will form. So we're going to have them all basically form it at the zero point. The inherent variance would be, we're going to set it on this one to one. So we'll have it zero to one will be our variance. The angle right now is at zero. So our particles are moving from left to right. If we go in 180, they will move right to left. If we go negative 90, our particles will then move from top to bottom, which is how we want it to actually move. We also have a rotation and spin. The rotation and the spin are both 3D items, so we will not be using them on our particle system at this point because our particles are in 2D with our picture being in 2D. But if you're doing a 3D image with needs particles, then the rotation and spin would come into effect. If you are going to change anything on the particles themselves, you're going to first need to go over to the render. And inside of the render, we're going to go up to 2D and select and make sure that 2D is active. From there, you can go into your viewer, right click and go to options and get rid of the checker underlay. That will give you a black background and that will allow you to see the particles that you have already gotten built. Now back over in the emitter node, we are going to adjust the particles themselves. So we're going to go over here to style. In the style, we're going to change from point to blob. In there, you can see that they are now larger. We're going to have a size of two for our blobs and our size variance is going to be one. So our blob will be either one to three and the velocity will be the same. The size to velocity will be one plus or minus the speed that you set on the controls side. If you want your snow or particles to be a different color, then you would just click on the color tab and select whatever color it is that you want for your snow. In this case, of course, we're going with the white. Now you can see that all of the particles are forming within this sphere and going down. That is not what we want. So we're going to go in here. If you select all, it will form all over the screen, but it does not form in one location. It basically forms and spawns new particles anywhere it wants. And we do not want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to select line. With the line, we are able to then start and finish with these handles. There are two handles that appear on the screen, one for starting and one for ending. We are going to start with the starting one and drag it up off of the screen. So that way, when the particles spawn right on the line, they are now dropping down. As you can see, they are not dropping all the way down to the bottom. So we will fix that in just a second. There are different ways, different reasons why this is not going all the way to the bottom. One of the reasons is, is our frames are too short and the speed is only allowing them to go about two thirds of the way down based on the number of frames that we have in our timeline. So we can either speed this up to 0.04 which would give us more time for the particles to reach the bottom. And we're going to also at the same time increase the lifespan to 250. Now all the particles are 
going to the bottom of the screen at this point. We're also going to go into the P render and we're going to select kill particles that are off the screen. So what that's going to do is any particle that is on the edges or on the bottom, it's going to automatically kill them so that you, it does not have to try to render them off screen. There's a pre-generate frames. Most of the time you can add frames for it to pre-generate so when you first start it's going to actually start at 100 frames down or you can add as many frames as you have which is say 135 frames down so it looks like it's already starting at the very bottom so this actually is pretty good the way it sits right now so now if you were to take the p render output and put it into the output of the media in it's going to create a merge if we take a look at it in our right viewer and we start this now we can see that the snow is now falling in front of our image and it's pre-generating all the way through it's starting all the way at the bottom which makes it look like it's been snowing for a while uh, you can keyframe this to where it's just starting lengthen out your timeline to make it look like the snow just started there's a lot of things that you can do all of this is user friendly the only thing now is there is a size variance but not that much so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a different drop size so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually take and get rid of our media out and we're going to be looking at the render in our picture so we're going to now take and make a larger snowflake because these snowflakes are small and we want to have more depth so we're going to copy that emitter control c and we're going to control paste now we're going to take the output of emitter 1 1 to the output of emitter 1 and that creates a merge and from there now you can see that there is going to be some larger particles on the screen when we change the size so we go to the p emitter one one we're going to go over here and go into the style tab and change the size of the snowflakes to let's say five that'll give you some really large snowflakes we can dial this back a little bit if you want and put it at 0.4 and now you got two different size snowflakes it gives it a little bit more of a depth feeling to it. From there, we're going to take the output of the P render to the merge. And now we're going to make the view active. And now you have snowflakes falling on your image. And we're going to change it just a little bit on the dirtier side so that it gives it a little bit more definition. And now with that snowflake being different color, when you play this, you will see that you have two different snowflakes sizes speeds and now you got a different color so now if, when you go over to the edit tab and play this now it looks like it's pretty good so that's how you make snowflakes and a snowstorm in davinci hope you liked this tutorial if you did please like and subscribe see you next time